The following program contains shocking expressions of free speech. If you suffer from being tongue-tied, ankle glossier, Randall might not be right for you. Check with your romper room teacher. Speaking the truth when others hold their tongues. Wrestling for justice with left-wingers and crocodiles. Resisting the temptation to keep the peace at any price. The host who has no equal. He uses sweet and low. Randall Terry. Welcome to the program, ladies and gentlemen. No, 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 no. I love them enough to tell them the truth. Do you? Oh, welcome to this show, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be a blockbuster. We were in New York City over the weekend at Ground Zero and at the proposed site of the Cordoba Mosque right at Ground Zero. And a training session in today's show on how you can be heard in your community by tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of people. Today's program brought to you in part by Don Juan. When you need someone to stand up against the Islamic hordes who want to destroy Christianity, call on a real man, Don Juan. And by Samuel Adams. He wasn't afraid to hurt British feelings when he had a real tea party. A quick word from my friend, Sir Reginald Blaine. When we come back, I will be talking to you from the streets of New York City at Ground Zero. Let's turn the thing on. I got something to say. The mayor of New York City, Michael Bloomberg, has said that people who do not think that a mosque should be in New York City at Ground Zero, that they are un-American. Hey, are you Jewish? Do you need to wake up and smell the pomegranates? They will kill you, homeboy, if you went over to Pakistan or to Arabia, someplace like that, where you say you're Jewish. They would slit your throat from ear to ear. Then you can come back to us and say, who's on American? Wake up, boy. I'm standing in front of old St. Peter's, one block from the World Trade Center. You can see behind me the cross that was pulled out of the rubble from that horrific day when Islamic terrorists flew two airplanes into the Twin Towers. This cross has been moved here and it will be ultimately put into the memorial that will be built when Ground Zero is completely reconstructed. I'm here because, number one, I want you to see how close the Cordoba Mosque is planned on being built to Ground Zero. But more importantly, I want to talk to you about what the Cordoba Mosque means to the devout Muslim mind and to a devout Muslim historian. I have a friend who is a clergyman, he's a cleric, and he he recently was at a a consecration in, in South America. And during a very holy moment when he was able to look at the crowd, he went like this to signify that he was happy. Well, in that particular culture, that gesture means a certain body part, all right? And I won't say any more than that. But the crowd was actually offended. He didn't know what went wrong. He could see it on their faces. He could hear the gasp. It would be like somebody flipping off an American. Everyone in America knows what that means. Well. The Cordoba Mosque that is planned for here, we're going to see it in one second where it's going to be. The the symbolism and the meaning of that very word, Cordoba, all right, the Cordoba house, is packed with meaning to the Muslim mind. Now, for us as Americans, Westerners, with very little knowledge of Islamic culture, history, the history of Muhammad, A mosque is a place of worship, a place where people pray, a place where people meditate. It certainly would uh, exemplify a a place of peace. Well, the very word Cordoba is packed with meaning that is anything but peaceful. Two things come to mind. Number one, the Cordoba Mosque in Cordoba, Spain, was basically an emblem of Islamic 
political and religious oppression. When the Muslims took Spain, Catholic Spain, they destroyed or captured virtually every church in Cordoba. One historian I, re I read said that every church in Cordoba was taken or destroyed by the Muslims, except for the cathedral. Well, after a few years, the Muslim authorities reneged on their promise to let the Catholics keep the cathedral, and they took, just seized half of it, half for a mosque, half for a church. A few years after that, they said, sell it to us. The Christians said, no, we won't have any place to worship. They said, we don't care, you're selling it to us. So under duress, the Cordoba Mosque in Spain was taken. When the Muslims were driven out, of course, it was converted back into a church. The second thing is, is that the caliphs reigned in Cordoba for at least 102 years. Now, for those of you who don't know, a caliph is a successor of Muhammad. It's the political authority. So there's a history of political authorities oppressing Christians and Jews, and a history with that word of taking a Catholic church and forcefully converting it into a mosque. The emblem matters to the hearer, all right? So when my friend went like that, to him it meant a sign of goodwill, a nice gesture. To the people listening, it was an offensive insult. When they want to call this the Cordoba Mosque, they're saying, hey, we're taking back political authority. We're going to have a, a place that, that says our religious mission is still in progress. And people will say, oh, but Cordoba was a wonderful time for Christians and Jews and Muslims to live together. You know, the facts don't bear up. Yes, there was a Jewish prime minister there for a while, and yes, there were little seasons of respite, but it was because the Muslims had such total control. You can have peace. When you have a tyrant, all you have to have is somebody who agrees to submit to the tyrant. So you have to remember that in Cordoba, Christians were required to wear a, a pig, a symbol of a pig on them. Jews were required to wear an ape. Yeah, think of the yellow star in Germany. To say that this was a, a great and golden era for Christian Jews and Muslims is simply to ignore the facts. The facts on the ground in Cordoba, Spain, the facts of 1,400 years of Islamic history. You'll see behind me, right there, see that Dakota Roadhouse sign? From that on, those are the numbers that the Muslims want to convert into a mosque. Want to tear down the existing structures and put up the Cordoba house. So think about it. There is that building, and then right behind me, you see Ground Zero. That's how close it is. They want to say that, well, it's just a, a chance for Muslims to have a gesture of goodwill. Really? With the name Cordoba? The name that talks about religious oppression? The name that talks about political oppression, the name that says to the Christian and Jewish world, think about it. They know what they mean when they say these words, and we need to understand what they mean when they say these words. There are people who insist that the Muslims have a constitutional right to build a mosque here, point granted. That's not the question. The question, is it prudent? The question is, does it show an ignorance on our part as to what the message really is? There's an old saying, none are as blind as the willfully blind. Fellow American, Christian, Jew, agnostic, atheist, fellow American Muslims, the Muslim leaders, both political and religious, around the world, they understand the meaning of Cordoba. They understand why they want to put a mosque here, this close to ground zero, saying, we will win. That's the message. We will win. 
Cordoba, the mosque will rise again. Cordoba, the caliphate will rise again. Islam will prevail and we're going to put an outpost. We're going to put an embassy two blocks away from ground zero. To pretend that it's anything other than that is being willfully blind. Do your own research and then lift up your voice to say no to the Cordoba Initiative here at Ground Zero. When we come back from this break, training on how you can be heard in your community by tens or hundreds of thousands of people concerning the truth about the Cordoba House, the Hadith, the Sunnah, Sharia law, and the words and deeds of Mohammed. Don't go away. It's about time that drunk drivers are taken off the road. They're a real menace to those of us who text while we drive. Moments with Moses. If you will not obey the voice of the Lord your God, or be careful to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command you this day, then all these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. Welcome back to the program, friend. To my fellow Tea Party activists, listen to me. You're about to see instructions on how to get into real battles, not just in front of our computers, not just blogging, but to go to the public square like Samuel Adams and like other great patriots did. Now, you're going to see some huge signs that we're holding. These are downloadable. Go to our website, terrycast.com. Click on Hear Mohammed Speak, and you'll see downloadable signs. Download them. Use them in your community and have your voice be heard. Here is an example of how to hold your own press conference. Our intention in this segment is to show you, by example, how you can hold your own press conference in your own city. Now, if you'll go to terrycast.com, click on Hear Mohammed Speak, and then click on Press Conference Instructions, okay? All the details will be there. And the truth of the matter is, if you do this, with a bold and stout heart with just you and one other person, just two of you. The chances are you're going to get an, an enormous amount of coverage and your voice will be heard by thousands, maybe tens or hundreds of thousands. And if you're in one of the bigger markets, you people in Atlanta, Dallas, you could be heard by millions. So you open up the press conference and you say, I am your name. They'll ask you to spell it. And then you say, we're here today for these six reasons. Again, go to the website and print them. You can print the six goals that we have, all right? Read those goals. It, it talks about us wanting to expose the Hadith, the words of Muhammad, to the entire world. It talks about us wanting to begin this discussion, this debate over the words and deeds of Muhammad and the Quran the anti-Christian, anti-Jewish passages of the Quran. It talks about our need to defy Sharia law while we still have the freedom to do so. So look at why we are doing this, print it if you want, and explain to the medium. These are the reasons. But I wanted to use this time to actually go through the mechanics of what we are asking you to do. You can either crumple up these passages you can tear them, or if that makes you uncomfortable, just drop them, just set them aside. The issue is to hear Mohammed speak. We want Mohammed's voice, Mohammed's mission, Mohammed's words and deeds to be seen by millions. And then we can ask the moderate imam in New York City at the Cordoba House, do you support these words or not? Do you uphold these words? Or do you defy them? We want to put Muslim leaders around the world on the hot seat for the way they're treating Christians in their countries. Do you support these words of Muhammad and believe them? Are you obeying them? Or will you turn away from them and lay down the sword of Muhammad and stop oppressing Christians and Jews? So, you're talking to the press and you say, I'm so-and-so. 
Let's read this passage. This is from the Hadith. These are Muhammad's words, by the way. I have been sent with the sword between my hands to ensure that no one but Allah is worshipped. Allah, who put my livelihood under the shadow of my spear and who inflicts humiliation and scorn on those who disobey my orders. And then you say to the camera, this is a peaceful religion? <laughs> that's, a, that's hysterical. <laughs> Uh, an example of tearing. Again, we're showing you this with two people in the shop because if it's just you and one other person, it's still going to have enormous impact. Pagans say that God is the Messiah, the Son of Mary. That means if you're a Christian and you say that you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, the Messiah, God the Son, part of the Trinity, that you're a pagan. Pagans say that God is the Messiah, the Son of Mary the punishment of those who wage war against God and his apostle and strive for mischief through the land is this, execution or crucifixion or the cutting off of hands and feet from opposite sides or exile. That's the Quran. This is a peaceful religion? All right. This from the Hadith, another saying of Muhammad. During the last days, there will appear some young foolish people who will say the best words, but will go out from or leave their religion, Islam. So wherever you find them, kill them. For whoever kills them shall have reward on the day of resurrection. These are Muhammad's instructions to kill Muslim apostates, men or women who, well, men specifically, who leave Islam. Women are to be beaten and imprisoned until they repent or die. This is not a peaceful religion. So that was an illustration of first the tearing, then the dropping, and then the crumpling. Nicely done. Thank you. <clears throat> when the Lord revealed to the angels saying, I will cast tear into the hearts of those who disbelieve, Smite then the upper parts of their necks and smite off all their fingertips. That is because they have opposed Allah and his messenger. That's from the Quran, chapter 8. This is a peaceful religion. They want us to show respect to a book that calls for us to be beheaded. Finally, <clears throat> These are the words of Muhammad again. When the apostle Muhammad rejoined his family, he handed his sword to his daughter Fatima saying, wash the blood from this daughter for by God it has served me well today. Did you even know that Muhammad killed people with his own hand? That's the point of having this press conference. We've got to take a quick break. When we come back, more instructions, more encouragement, and ways in which you can have your voice heard by hundreds of thousands and maybe millions of people. Don't go away. I know. Oh, shut de do, keep out the devil. Shut de do, keep the Rudy in the night. Shut de do, keep out the devil. GOP gonna be all right. GOP gonna be all right. Courage is rightly esteemed the first of human qualities because it is the quality which guarantees all others. Sir Winston Churchill. Welcome back to the program. As of right now, we have six cities online to do this. We'd love it to be 15 or 20. You need to do this. And we need prayer cover. We're looking for people to join us in nine days of prayer from September 28th until October the 6th, then we launch the whole thing on the 6th and the 7th around the country. And finally, go to our website, terrycast.com, click on Hear Mohammed Speak and learn what to do. I'll be right back. Be not silent, O God of my praise, for wicked and deceitful mouths are opened against me, speaking against me with lying tongues.
John Quincy Adams said, the command to propagate the Muslim creed by the sword is always obligatory when it can be made effective. The commands of the prophet may be performed alike by fraud or by force. Did you hear that? Fraud. Listen to me, friends. Don't just watch history happen. Make history. Stand for the truth. Go to terrycast.com and join us.